Hi, I'm Timothy Brussel, and I'm with my Math 1324 class today. We're looking at linear programming, the graphical method, and those, those students that are enrolled in my class this semester, this is like your number five in your homework, okay? This is like number five. We want to maximize and minimize the function uh, z equals 8x plus 3y subject to 5x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 40, x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 16, and x and y both greater than or equal to 0. And first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw my uh, boundary line for the inequality 5x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 40. We have to graph the line 5x plus 8y equals 40. If x is 0, what does y equal? 5, okay. If y is uh, 0, x is equal to 8, I agree. So I'll come over here to my graph paper. Hmm. Notice we have those non-negativity constraints. It's hard to read those, aren't they? That says x and y are greater than or equal to zero. That's saying that we're in quadrant one. So I'm only going to draw the grid for quadrant one. So we have, oh, let's see, well, let's see, we have a point zero five, one, two, three, four, five, and eight zero. So I'm going to make a note that that's five, that's eight. I draw my line. I should have brought a ruler in, but I don't. Well, we're not building bridges here, so a little wavy lines are okay, I suppose. But if you're ever up there or somewhere building bridges or designing runways for airports, at least if it's an airport I'm going to be flying into, don't think to yourself that Mr. Brisella said that wavy lines are okay. So uh, we need to decide which side of that green line are we going to shade. Are we going to shade? To the right or to the left? Are we going to shade above or below? How do we make that decision? Yeah, uh, yes, we're going to test. What point do you think I'll test? Has to be a point that's not on the green line. Zero, I'll use zero, zero. That's my favorite test point because it's easy to plug in zero for x. It's easy to plug in zero for y. The only time I won't test zero, zero is if the line passes through the origin. In that event, I can't test that. So five times zero plus eight times zero. Is that greater than or equal to 40? Zero is bigger than 40. True or false? False. So we don't want to shade here at the origin. Where are we shading? We're shading away from the origin. We're shading all out here. We're shading out here. Now, the second inequality, the blue inequality, x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 16. If you, we graph x plus 8y equals 16, when x is 0, y is 2, okay. When y is 0, x is oh, 16, okay. So we locate our points on our grid, 0, 2, and 16 right there 16 0 draw our blue boundary line
We need to decide where we're going to shade. Are we going to shade above the blue line or below? To make that decision, what will we do? Okay. Testing zero, zero. Are we going to get a true statement or a false statement? We'll get zero plus zero is bigger than 16. False. So we don't shade the side towards the origin. We shade away. We're shading out here. So... This little triangular wedge now isn't going to be shaded. Our feasible region now, our feasible region, the region that gets shaded both times, is this unbounded region bounded by the y-axis, the green line segment, the blue line segment, and the x-axis. This is an unbounded feasible region. For an unbounded feasible region, either a maximum or a minimum value will exist, but not both. Only one of them is going to occur at the corner point. So, let's see. What are my corner points? Start up here, moving along the y-axis, we come to this first point where we're changing line, we're about to change border uh, boundary lines. So that's the point zero five. So we have the point zero five corners. We have the point zero five. We move along the green line, we come to another point. It's formed by the green and the blue lines. Well, do we know what that is? We can't just look at the graph and tell. Move along the blue line. Ah, we've come to another corner point. 16, 0. We know that one. 16, 0. But we need to find that corner point right there. The one there in the middle. So, what I would do, I'd use, that was formed by the green line. This point of intersection was formed by the green line 5x plus 8y equals 40 and the blue line x plus 8y equals 16. So, what was it? It was 5x plus 8y equals 40 and x plus 8y is equal to 16. Oh, this one's nicer than that last one we did. The one we did on the board. Using elimination, we already have the, the same coefficients on the y's. I just multiply that second equation by negative 1 and add the two together. So what's that going to give us? That would be a 5x minus 1x. That gives me a 4x. Oh, that, that pen is no good. Okay. So I have a 4x. What's about to happen to the y's? That's a 40. That would become a minus 16. 40 minus 16 gives me a 24. Divide both sides by 4 to give me x equals 6. Hmm. Now, no, even using graph paper, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Looks like my x coordinate would be five and a half. So just looking there, that's no good. The x coordinate we got is six. Now we need the y coordinate. What do we do to find the y coordinate? Plug in the x. I think I'll use x plus eight y equals sixteen. I'm going to plug in x equals six. 6 plus 8y equals 16. So we have 8y equals 16 minus 6 is 10. Divide both sides by 8 to give y equals 10 eighths. Oh, that reduces to what? 5 fourths? So there's my third corner point. I hope I hope something occurs at the six five fourths. Otherwise, we went through all that effort for no purpose. So, let's see. What's the function we're trying to uh, maximize and minimize? Uh, where is that objective function? It's up there somewhere. There it is. <coughs> Z equals 
8x plus 3y. So plug in 0, 5. What are we going to get for z? That would be a z, uh, 0 plus 15, which is, okay, 15. Plug in 16, 0. <clears throat> is that a 128? 8 times 16 plus 3 times 0. Someone check me there. I'm getting a 128 in my mental arithmetic. And finally, plug in the 6 5 fourths. So that's an 8 times 6 plus a 3 times 5 fourths. That's given me. Oh, do I even have a calculator here? Yeah, okay. So that's given me. <clears throat> I'm getting a 51 and 3 fourths. Someone check me there. I'm getting a. I don't know if y'all can see my display or not. There. No matter what, it seems like there's a bad glare. But I'm getting 51 and 3 fourths. 51.75. I write it as a fraction. They may want it as a decimal uh, when you punch it into my math lab. But anyway, so we have three z values. Now we have to decide, since it's an unbounded feasible region, either the maximum or the minimum value is going to exist, but not both. Which one will not exist? We suspect it's the maximum. So, because that's the case in most uh, unbounded feasible regions, in most cases the maximum won't exist. Give me a point way out here in the feasible region. Do you agree 100, 100 would be in that feasible region? If we plug in 100 for x and 100 for y, are we going to get a value bigger than 128? If we plug in 100, 100, ah. If we plug in 100, 100, are you going to get a z value? Here are the three possible z values. There, there, or there. The biggest one is 128. So if the maximum exists, the maximum is 128. Is 128 the maximum? Can you find an ordered pair here that would give us a z value bigger than 128? Sure, 100, 100 would give you a, a 1100. So 128, this is you thinking to yourself. You think to yourself, 128 is not the max. That is not the maximum. And if 128 is not the maximum, that means the minimum has to exist. So what's the minimum value? The minimum value is 15. The minimum value of z is 15, and it occurs at the corner point. Huh, it occurs at the corner point zero five. All that work to get the six five fourths, and that wasn't even into that wasn't even significant. So, I'll say the minimum value of z is what does say fifteen. It occurs at. The ordered pair is 0, 5. What do we say about the maximum value? There is no maximum value. Any questions there? For an unbounded feasible region, one or the other will exist and it will occur at a corner point. But you won't have both a maximum and a minimum value existing for an unbounded feasible region in the first quadrant. Okay, I'm going to take a break now.